Okay. Hi, Scott Orlam with Cinema Magazine. The movie is called Suspiria, and the man responsible for it, director Luco Guadagnino. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what was it about the original Dario Argento film that you found interesting enough to want to re-examine? First of all, Suspiria by Dario Argento is a shock primal scene. When you see it, it gives you the, the life-changing experience of seeing an ex something that tells you that everything is possible, that the form of cinema, the language of cinema can be twisted on every kind of uh, ways uh, to deliver uh, a very emotional blast. Secondly, uh, the idea of a world of women who are uh, uh, let's say, uh, mischieving, uh, mischievingly creating plots to use magic against other women, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, triggered in me the, the necessity to, to understand more and to understand how to, that, that could be uh, evolved into what belongs to my imagery. I mean, this is for Germany, so obviously one of the interesting components of your adaptation is that you set it in Germany at a very particular point in time where there was political unrest going on. What do you think that element and that location lent to the story? The movie by Dario was made in 76 and came out in 77, and it's set in Freiburg. And it was a movie that was devoid of any relationship with reality. Everything was a heightened hyper-reality and there was no resonance from what was the environment where he was shooting his movie and when he was shooting his movie. David Kajanek and I, my writer and I, we immediately felt that Germany and 77 were our clues for our idea of this film, in which the anxieties of a very complex uh, uh, generational conflict in a place where uh, the, the lid of the guilt was not yet lifted and in a way was uh, 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 poisoning the, the foundation of society after the uh, um, impossibly to comprehend the crimes of uh, the nation of Germany during the war and before. Uh, felt for us as a very strong uh, counterpart to the world of the witches that were looking in, from inside their own world to the world outside. We wanted to deal with this anxiety as a sort of uh, a counterpartner in the anxieties of the evil of the witches. Obviously, this is not an action movie, but if one were to look at the action in the movie, it's all kind of around the world of dance. How familiar were you with dance and getting into the choreography? Because that plays such a pivotal moment. And pivotal the Argento moment. movie was uh, set in a company, not a company, in a ballet school. And uh, curiously, there were, I would say, one and a half minutes of actual dance in the film. And David and I, we immediately felt that we wanted dance to be not just a decorative element, but a completely organic, intertwined, flesh and bone and blood part of the story of this film. And so the choreographies had to come with a greater depth and a greater sense of commitment to the story of the film and uh, as a way to transmit uh, spells, as a way to transmit the, the, the sort of the um, turmoil of the unconscious. And uh, I am familiar with the dance and the contemporary dance world. Uh, and uh, we, we, we really were lucky to work with the great Damien Jalette, who did an incredible job in encompassing what we discussed about the magic and the spell, but also in recreating and giving life to a world in which uh, we have gone through, which is the dance of the avant-garde during the 70s. And just really quick, is Dakota Johnson your muse? I kind of resist the idea of Muse. I think Muse has to deal mostly with the egomaniac male, uh, possibly gay men, or if not gay, closeted gay men, who needs to have an objectified woman to stare and suck from. I like to be in absolute mutual interaction with the people I like to work, whether they are incredibly great actresses like Dakota or Tilda or my production designer or in general people I like to work with. The muse is not something that is really for me. Well, 
Thank you for sharing this movie with us. Thank you. Grazie, and this is Scott Orland. Until next time. Bye, Scott.